Welcome to a tutorial on how to determine the horizontal intercepts or x-intercepts of a given function on the TI-89 graphing calculator. This would be the same as determining the real zeros of a given function. Let's begin by entering f of x into the calculator from the y equals screen. So we'll press diamond f1, which brings us to the y equals screen. Let's clear out this old function by pressing up and then clear. And now we'll enter f of x. So we'll enter 2x raised to the power of 2 plus 7x minus 15. Enter. Let's begin by graphing this on the standard window, which means both the x and y axes would go from negative 10 to positive 10. To do this, we press f2 for zoom and then 6 for zoom standard. If we knew we already had the standard window, we could have just pressed diamond f3 for graph. With this window, we can see the two horizontal intercepts here and here. But let's adjust the window so we get a better view of the parabola. Let's decrease the x maximum, increase the x minimum, and also decrease the y minimum so that we can see the vertex of the parabola. So we'll press diamond F2 for window. Let's change the x min to negative 8, enter. Let's change the x max to 5, enter. We'll leave the x scale at 1. And now let's change the y minimum to, let's say, negative 30. Enter. Let's leave the y max at 10. Enter. Let's change the y scale to 4. Enter. And now let's regraph f of x by pressing diamond f3. Notice how this is a much better window for f of x. And now we'll use the calculator to determine the two horizontal intercepts, the point here and the point here. So let's press F5 for the math menu. We determine the coordinates of the horizontal intercepts by using the zero function, which is number two. So let's press two. Now let's find the horizontal intercept on the left first. The calculator is asking for a lower bound, which means we move the cursor to the left of this point, which in this case would be above the horizontal intercept. So we'll press the left arrow. This point is now to the left of the horizontal intercept, so we'll press Enter. Now it's asking for upper bound, so we move the cursor to the right of the horizontal intercept. So we'll press the right arrow to, let's say, here. Press Enter. Notice how the cursor is on the horizontal intercept, and here it gives us the coordinates, negative 5, comma, 0. Let's go ahead and write this ordered pair down. And now let's find the second horizontal intercept. So we'll press F5 for math, 2 for 0. And now we'll find this horizontal intercept. So for the lower bound, we want to move the cursor to the left of this horizontal intercept, but close to it. Let's say here, enter. The upper bound means be to the right of the point, so we'll press the right arrow until we're above the horizontal intercept, and then we press enter. And notice how the cursor is on the horizontal intercept, and the point is 1.5 comma 0. So it is important to give the horizontal or x-intercepts as ordered pairs, because they are points on the given function. And now let's find the horizontal or x-intercepts for g of x. So we'll press diamond F1 for y equals, up, clear, and enter x raised to the power of 2 plus 4x minus 10. Enter. Let's try graphing this using the standard window. So we'll press zoom 6. Notice how we'll need to adjust the window again. We'll need to at least decrease the y minimum. So let's press diamond F2. Let's change the y minimum to, let's say, negative 20. Enter. Let's change the y scale to 2. Enter. And now graph, diamond F3. This is a much better window. Again, notice how we have two horizontal intercepts. To determine the coordinates, we'll press F5 for math, 2 for 0. Let's find this point on the left first. So we'll press the left arrow until the cursor is to the left of that horizontal intercept. Let's say here, enter. Upper bound means to the right of the horizontal intercept. 
let's say here, enter. Notice for this example, we're getting decimal approximations. The coordinates of this point is approximately negative 5.74166 comma zero. Let's go ahead and write this down. After we find the second horizontal intercept, we'll find the exact coordinates of the horizontal intercepts from the home screen. So we'll press F5, two for zero, move the cursor to the left of the horizontal intercept on the right. So press the right arrow. Let's go ahead and stop, let's say here, enter. Upper bound means to the right, so in this case above, enter. The approximate coordinates are 1.74166 comma zero. Because the calculator gave us decimal approximations for the horizontal intercepts of g of x, this means these values are probably irrational. So if we go to the home screen, we can find the exact coordinates. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's press the home key. To find the horizontal intercepts, we want to determine the x values where the function value or y is equal to zero, which means if we solve the equation x squared plus four x minus 10 equals zero, we can determine the exact x coordinates of these horizontal intercepts. To do this, we'll press F2 for the algebra menu, number one for solve, and then again, we'll enter x raised to the power of two plus four x minus 10 equals zero, comma, we want to solve the equation for x, close parenthesis, and enter. Just as we expected, notice how the solutions to the equation which would be the x-coordinates of the horizontal intercepts are irrational. So the exact coordinates for this point would be negative square root 14 minus two comma zero, and the exact coordinates for this point would be square root 14 minus two comma zero. Let's go ahead and write these down. So when using the graphing screen to determine horizontal intercepts, if the x-coordinate is irrational, the graphing screen will only give us decimal approximations, but if we set the function equal to zero and use the solve function from the algebra menu, as long as the calculator is in exact or automatic mode, we can determine the exact x-coordinates of the horizontal intercepts. I hope you found this helpful.